Hi, I'm Hazel. Today, we're looking at new gold making methods as well as some of my top old ones that are still going strong in 8.3. If you're feeling stuck in your grind for a Brutosaur, maybe this will give you some ideas. As always, your results will vary by server, the amount of competition you have, and your patience for neurotically relisting things. In no particular order, first up we have new 8.3 fishing and cooking. Aberrant void fins, malformed gnashers, and questionable meat are used to craft food that gives great buffs for horrific visions. Depending on the prices, you could farm mats and craft food to sell, or just sell the materials directly. If you do go the cooking route, ghastly goulash and kebab have been doing the best for me. For the fish, you can cast into open water in Oldham or Vale and get 50-50 void fins and gnashers. You can find pools of either if you'd prefer to just target one fish. Those pools also give you a roughly 1% chance to pull up the Gloop pet, which at this point is still selling pretty well. If you find yourself needing questionable meat, I like this spot in Oldham with arid bone pickers. There's a whole pile of them close together, they're easy to clear and respawn in roughly 5 minutes. The meat does tend to be cheap though, so I would only farm it if your supply is low and you need it to get more value out of your fish. Next up, Nihilatha BOE Gear. This is probably the fastest method on my list, if you're lucky. You can either just raid a bunch and hope for BOEs to sell directly, or more likely, watch the market for cheap ones and try to flip them. Buy low, sell high, but also buy carefully. We're in the last raid tier of BFA, so market prices are going to continue trending downwards. If you're still up for flipping BOEs though, keep an eye out for desirable corruptions. Infinite Stars and Twilight Devastation in particular are strong for a lot of people and can drive an item's value up massively. Next, keep an eye on the new reputation contracts with the Oldham Accord and Rajani. Scribes can buy patterns to craft these starting at Revered with the respective faction. If you've got a scribe that's got that rep, you can just craft those and do well. Even if you don't have inscription to craft them though, it may be worth keeping an eye on the price. If it dips below region average and there aren't that many, it might be worth buying them all to reset that market. Something that's seeing a big comeback in 8.3 are the Famine Evaluator Feasts which were introduced in 8.2. Those are still the best in-game raid feast, so the demand is holding strong as guilds buy them up for Nihilatha. This gives you two good options. You can either fish for Viperfish and Najatar and just straight up sell those, or combine them with spare crates and some cheap meat to make the feast to sell. Spare crate farming can be very fast with the trusty old Junkwat Depot farm, and that gives you the bonus of extra recycling parts to sell on the auction house. The next method is alliance only, and that's jelly. This stuff still sells. If you did your B mount grind back when it came out, you may have already bought the jelly goggles to track nodes on your map. Now that the craze has died down, you can fly around grabbing tons of the stuff and then convert to royal jelly and sell. The same jelly farming tips still apply. Use monal hardened stirrups to loot while mounted, and try farming in war mode if it's too crowded. If you're interested but never did the honeyback hive stuff, I've got a video on that that I'll link below. Next is arguably the simplest gold to make right now, and that's herbalism, specifically Zinanthid. We're using the same potions and flasks in Nihilatha that we made in 8.2, so this weird purple barnacle thing continues to reign supreme. They're holding steady at 50 gold a piece right now or better on many servers. It's about the same gold per hour as jelly farming, but with better sale rates and it's not alliance specific. The downside is that since it's so valuable, sometimes competition can make nodes tough to find. Make sure that you've got a Sky Golem or Lumber Extractor mount, or you're just a druid so that you don't have to slow down. Try War Mode if you're being out herbed, and then check out this Farm HUD add-on. This isn't new, but I just got this recently. It overlays your minimap markers in the center of your screen so that you just never have to move your eyes. You'll be much faster at gathering, and you may forget to blink. If Zinanthid is really too crowded, or if you're leveling alts between 110 and 120, don't forget about basic BFA herbing. The prices of your standard BFA herbs have bounced back some, and you can pull these up in crazy quantities with farm HUD and a good route. Not to mention that's still your best way to get anchor weed, which is just as exciting as ever. For crafting professions, I've been doing well lately with alchemy. With procs from the rank 3 recipes and Silas's potion of prosperity, you can get very nice value for all those herbs. Enchanting is also worth a look, although enchant prices have definitely trended down since 8.3. My next recommendation, and don't laugh, is world quests. I like this because it's raw gold farming. It doesn't matter how dead your server is, or if you can only log on once a day. With our current levels of gear and corruption and flying, you can tear through world quests in no time at all. Gather along the way if you have herb or mining, and target world quests offering gold and rep. 
If you have enchanting, the gear and mana pearl quests become worthwhile also. It's not necessarily Brutusaur gold all by itself, but it adds up. All that rep from world quests will also be giving you paragon caches with another 4k gold in each. Last, and possibly least, depending on you and your life, 8.3 offers us a way to offload seafarers' doubloons. If your character is sitting on buckets of doubloons and wants to get paid for them, this is your patch. There's a new vendor next to the old doubloon vendor offering loot boxes for doubloons, and those can contain sellable transmog and pets. Mind you, the value of those things has tanked since the patch, but it's not nothing, and if you weren't going to spend doubloons anyways, it's a net profit. There's also strong odds on island mounts if you like those. If you're buying boxes purely for gold, I would wait for the Havenswood Salvage. That has a chance to contain the Duskhaven Transmog set. The Duskhaven Top Hat is still one of the best island mog items to sell, valuing over 100k on many servers even today. And those are my 8.3 gold tips. Best of luck on your Brutosaurus, thanks for watching, let me know what's been working for you in the comments, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.